morning everybody we're at a rest area here in northeast pennsylvania on i-81 we're headed up into massachusetts today so we're going to be going through the rest of pennsylvania dipping through new york connecticut into massachusetts to Wol Woburn, massachusetts where i'm going to deliver one pallet then we're going to head over to beverly massachusetts where i have some more deliveries to make tomorrow once that's done tomorrow, then we head up into Maine, to Biddeford, and then we'll see where my reload takes me from there, but my trailer will be empty at that point. So let's get going, let's get out there. It was a good night. We actually got a spot at the rest area here. If you watched yesterday's vlog, we got lucky. Now it's time to head out there. Let's go do some trucking. Let's go find some coffee. Ready to rock and roll. Oh, lights are on. Now we're ready to rock and roll. Just gonna do a quick tug test. Trailer brakes work. Trailer didn't fall off. Release them. And trailer brakes release. Now we gotta successfully get around this guy here who pulled a little bit further forward than I did. Shouldn't be a problem. problem at all truck is still clean from yesterday's blue beacon truck wash I think it's gonna be a really good day I always feel better when the truck is clean I'm just going up to the next exit here there's a little Exxon truck stop I'm gonna stop in there and go get some coffee. They had coffee in the rest area here, but they didn't supply cups. I don't got any clean cups to use. So off to the next truck stop we go. Oh, so we're just around the corner here. Yeah, here it comes. It looks like a very small truck stop. Hopefully it won't be all jam-packed. Shouldn't be this time of day. I just want a coffee. Turn left and then take the entrance to the right in 20 meters. One second, Karen. Drop your drop needs coffee first. Very important. The way to make Trucker Josh happy in the morning is coffee and a clean truck to drive. this road for eight kilometers. No, I'm gonna turn in here. The way to make me happy on the road in the morning is a good cup of coffee and a clean truck. And you got a happy truck and Josh. I don't know where we park here. It's a very small one. I guess we just park right here. So they have Green Mountain Coffee here. Decent. Decent. It'll do the trick. It'll do the trick. We're stopping for fuel in about three and a half hours. In Massachusetts, exit one. There's a pilot there, according to my uh, fleet app. That is where I'm going to find the cheapest juice today. So that's where we're headed. Fill up the 
tanks and then go to our delivery. They're expecting us there this afternoon. No specific time, first come, first serve. They close at 4.30, so I'm guessing I got one skid for them. So as long as I'm there before four, I'm guessing that'd be okay. They didn't tell me, but I'm planning to be there for around two o'clock.
slowing down now because now everybody's in this lane already. Let's go. Look at this. They have to have a cop over here where the lane ends to make sure everybody behaves. Because <laughs> you know if that guy wasn't there, it would be chaos right here. Right at the end here. You'd have people pushing over these cones. So a big thank you to the cops who just sit there all day. It must be boring. I hope you got some entertainment or something. But because he sits there, people act a little nicer. <laughs> they should do that in Canada too, you know? Maybe that'll solve some of our problems. So what are they actually doing here? Do they got this lane closed. Couple of trucks here sitting around. Okay, so up here they're doing something. All of this mess was for this right here. Right up ahead here. Let's see what's so important. All these trucks are not doing anything, they're just sitting there. Exit one. Get some G. 
juice, fill her up. I'm just about quarter tank still. I've been doing pretty good fuel economy. Had a pretty light load. And when you're driving here on the east coast, all of these big trees on either side of the freeways really give nice shelter. Whereas out on the plains, on the prairies in the Midwest, you get all of that wind that hits you from every one angle. Kilometer. Take exit one. Mashapog Road, Southbridge, Sturbridge and then slight right at 160 meters. It doesn't really matter if the wind's coming from the side or from the front. Unless if it's coming from behind you, it's bad. It's going to cut right between your truck and trailer or hit you straight on. Meters. Take exit one. Mashapog Road, Southbridge, Sturbridge and then slight right at 160 meters. Looks like they changed this to exit three now. My GPS it still thinks it's exit one. Well, where's the other two exits then? Did I miss them? Huh, yeah, it's exit three now. It used to be exit one. Wonder when that got changed. Whoa, cowboy. This is a tight corner. All right. 100 meters, slight right on, Mashapog Road, Southbridge, and then slight right in 50 meters. All righty. Right, you said right, right. Right, right. It is packed. Packed, packed. Now I gotta pick a lane. Which lane do I think is gonna move the fastest? I have no idea. I'm gonna pick just this one right here. Nope, I want this one. Yeah, one of these. I think this one will be good. Gonna trying to back out or what's he doing? I want to go in there. Is this guy not going to go in there? What is this guy doing? To my left here. Oh, if you're trying to go out the highway, I'm going to go in this way then. Change his mind. Who knows? Who knows? This is my spot now. I left it open for him if he wanted it. I always remember this pilot. He used to always stop here. This is like the one pilot going through Massachusetts, right? And I always used to pretty much just feel a pilot flying J to get their points and showers and stuff, right? One second here. Just tell the world what I'm doing. So I've stopped here before. Stopping for night can be a little sketchy. I don't know if the way the truck stop's set up, there's many spots where you, you have to take a risk parking that someone's gonna drag their trailer over you at night or back into you while they're trying to get in. But that's a lot of truck stops. And when you're on the East Coast, when you find a spot, you're just happy that you found a spot. I try to stick to rest areas out here because that is usually a pull through spot. Not that I'm afraid of backing in. I, I'm confident in my ability to back into any spot but uh, it's the other people backing in beside me. I'd rather have a pull through spot beside me so that they just pull in beside me and right? I don't gotta worry about as much about getting hit. Hopefully this goes quickly. I just wanna fuel, grab coffee and go. I think I have another hour, hour and a half to my delivery point. They said to be there before 4.30, so I'd say like around four. Right now, with all the traffic I've had to deal with, I'm probably going to be there about 2.30 now. I was hoping for 2, but probably 2.30. Maybe 3 o'clock. Depends how much more traffic we get, yeah. We are fueled. Let's get out of this mess. It is nuts in there. Fuel, got coffee, what else do I need, right? Actually wasn't that bad, I didn't have to wait that long. Fantastic. So now we have another 109 kilometers or 65 miles or so to our destination. We are on schedule, everything's looking good. One kilometer, 
entrance there, bud. entrance to the left on I-84 East I-90. Oh, he figured it out. <laughs> it is still so hot. Thanks. The East Coast is hot. Thought it was September. This Canadian is melting again all the time. I'm always melting. I'm either frozen or I'm melting. There's no in-between. There's about two weeks during the year, during the spring and the fall, where I'm good. Take the entrance to the left on I-84 East I-90. One week in spring and one week in fall. Those are the comfortable weeks. Where do I go here now? Where do I go? 300 meters. Take the entrance to the left on I-84 East I-90. All right. All right. Let's follow that other truck up there. He's from uh, New Brunswick. Another Canadian up here. Down here. Whatever. However you look at it. On a map, it's down. Enter here. Very nice. Very, very nice. You have arrived at your destination. On the left side. Beverly. Ma. Which way do I go? Do I go this way? I don't know if I go this way or not. I think I go this way. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Worried for a second there. You take a wrong turn in these neighborhoods and you're you're stuck. You gotta get the cops to come block traffic and everything. You don't wanna do that. There's some truck parking. another hub cover the third one I've lost on this trip I lost two off this side and one off the other side <laughs> I have to go replace it again they're not too expensive they're like 12 bucks and I also lost one of these I must have hit a pothole and that just popped off so I made sure this one was really in there really good it has little clamps that come with it that pin it in there so I made sure it was really pinned in there the next person has to check the hub oil which might be me we'll have a hard time getting that off it's not gonna come off on its own and I also have to get more uh, lug nut covers so I think that's my last spare here we are waiting for tomorrow I got my one delivery off today. There's one skid. And now I'm in Beverly, Massachusetts, which is Boston. And I have to deliver right there. First thing in the morning. They were thinking of unloading me this evening, but uh, there's one of our contacts has to be here when we get it unloaded. We wanna make sure that this stuff gets to the right place. It's a huge, big place. And we wanna make sure that, uh, cause my appointment is for tomorrow, 8 a.m. I was trying to see if I could get unloaded a little early today and then head on down the road to my next delivery now nah, I gotta wait for my delivery appointment this is one of those places this is one of those deliveries that you can't be early definitely can't be late uh, so I can sit right here they gave me permission just to park right here and uh, wait till morning 730 I'll run in there and uh, track someone down and I bet you anything by eight o'clock when it's my appointment time at eight o'clock, I bet you by then I'll be on my way up to Maine. That means I'll be able to get Maine delivered tomorrow and probably get reloaded Friday sometime. 
then I won't be stuck somewhere over the weekend. We'll see. I don't have a reload scheduled on me yet. They may have some plans for me, but probably waiting to see when I get unloaded because they don't want to commit to anything and then have me suddenly hit some kind of big delay or snag and then have that load fall through. It's been fun pulling around the Conestoga, the roll tight. Is, uh, I washed it yesterday, so it's pretty clean. It's definitely not brand new. If I ever buy my own trailer, and I want to, it's just, it, it may not be practical because uh, we do so many drop-in hooks and I haul so much different kinds of freight that it might just not make sense for me to have my own trailer like this. But if I ever do get my own trailer, it's going to be a tri-axle like this with two lift axles. The rear and the front will be lift so that I can run it just on one axle when I'm empty. Save those tires and save fuel. Also, if I'm running empty on toll roads, you get charged for the tires that are on the ground. So if I can lift up two axles, that's two axles I don't have to pay for on the toll roads because they're lifted. So I want to have lift axles, tri-axles so I can put them all down if I have something heavy. And I'd probably get a roll tight, something like this. Same color even. I I like the color obviously. It matches my truck nicely. We'll see. I might get a step deck too, I don't know. But that's not on the plans at all. That's not even in the book of plans. Because like I said, I don't think it would make sense for me to have my own trailer when I'm constantly doing drop and hooks all the time. And I'm not gonna let anybody else pull my trailer. If I own my trailer, that is going to be my trailer and it will not come uncoupled from this truck except when I put my truck in my shop and when I grease my fifth wheel but maybe one day maybe I'll work something out I'd love to pull my whole own unit keep the whole thing polished truck and trailer polished lots of lights like you remember Moses's trailer he had a Conestoga too he had a roll tight uh, black tarps and uh, he was in the videos like two weeks ago, right? Two or three weeks ago. His trailer. That was nice. I want a nicer one than that. <laughs> I want to be able to pull up to him and outdo him because he blew me out of the water. His truck was clean. It looked great. It had that little lowering kit on it. He had the clean trailer, all the chicken lights. Yeah, one day. One day I'll be able to park beside him and at least be on equal level right right now yeah i got a w900 it's it's pretty it's mine i like it but uh it's definitely not the nicest looking truck on the road but shh, don't don't tell old blue i said that it's sleeping right now can't hear me we'll get it there one day we'll get it there one day it'll be the nicest truck on the road you'll see Maybe. It's expensive to have it the nicest truck. <laughs> the truck. Doing your truck up like that. Because it's still a working truck, right? It's never just going to be a show truck. It's always going to be a working truck. So, it may not be the nicest truck you'll ever see. But it'll turn a few heads, right? It'll, it'll be like, hey, that's a nice truck. You know? That's the kind of reaction I'm trying to get from people one day. We'll see. Then there's, of course, the party poopers that are like, well, you know, chrome and chicken lights don't make you money. I know that very well. I know that very well, believe me. They cost a lot of money. But they sure make you feel good, and it's sure a lot of fun. And that's... That's part of... Part of life. You want to enjoy what you do. You only live once. If you can pull it off, if I can pull off having a really nice truck, why not? If it doesn't happen, it doesn't happen, right? But that's, that's the way I see it. I dream... And then I try to make those dreams reality. I'll try really hard. And I've been successful so far bringing dreams into reality. But I also have it in the front of my mind that if it doesn't work out, that's okay too. The number one priority is family and our home. Truck comes after all that. Family has to be taken care of. Home has to be secured, taken care of. And after that, I can go have some fun with my truck. But I also have to remember that family needs to go on vacations family needs well as our kids grow up it's going to get more and more expensive if they start playing hockey or other sports it's there's that so it's a balance right so i'm happy with whatever uh 
with whatever I, I, I get. As long as I got my family, the rest is all bonus. I already got the truck I've always wanted, so it's fine just the way it is, if that's the way it stays. Anyways, enough talking. I gotta go to bed, or get ready to go to bed, do some work here on the computer, and uh, twiddle my thumbs. I gotta get busy twiddling my thumbs. I got lots to do, lots of thumbs to twiddle. Wait until 8 a.m. tomorrow. Well, 7.30. I'm going to go in there at 7.30. I want to be early. I want to be out of here by 8. We'll, we'll see. We'll see. See what happens. I'll see you then, though. So, for today, you stay safe, you be safe, and you drive safe. I'll see you right here tomorrow. Don't forget to make sure you're subscribed to my channel. We make new videos every day. Tomorrow, we'll be going up into Maine. And after we deliver, if we have a reload, we'll figure it out from there. Maybe we'll be going back into Canada to reload. Maybe we'll... I know. Let's see what happens. The world of possibilities.